So are you looking to get a new iPad? Well, I guess the question is, which one should you get? Should you go with the iPad, the iPad Air, the 11 Pro, or the 12.9 inch? The one iPad that you should not touch is the iPad Mini. We'll elaborate on that towards the end of this video, but for the other iPads, well, we're gonna answer the question, which one should you get? If this is the first time you're watching one of our videos, be sure to hit subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now, unlike some of the other videos you may have watched, we're actually gonna to try to keep this as simple as possible. Now, if you do want a full breakdown, Apple's got a great tool on their site that breaks down each iPad. Now, we could rehash all that information for you, but we're gonna assume that you can read. But we will point out what others think is a big deal, but for the average consumer, isn't gonna matter. When it comes to our videos, Aaron and I are normal consumers. We're just like you guys. Normal, not influencers, normal guys and gals. <laughs> so on your iPad, what have you been crushing on lately? Oh God. You've been crushing on, oh God? No, <laughs> I actually don't know. Perfect. <laughs> I've been watching The Mandalorian on Disney Plus oh, on the 11 inch iPad Pro. Did you just start watching it? I did. It's really good. Wait, you watched The Mandalorian? Yeah, like a year ago. Now when it comes to iPads, the default for us anyways is to start with this iPad Air. Like in terms of just value and functionality from our perspective, this is like it blows my mind that Apple came out with this thing because it just kind of, well, you'll find out it kind of defeats the purpose of one of these pros. And it was the updated form factor is going to be easier to deal with than the normal iPad, the equidistant bezel. Basil, Basil, Basil. Around the screen looks better than the normal iPad. It has the potential to do more as it's compatible with the Apple Magic Keyboard and Smart Keyboard and works with the Apple Pencil too. It has a USB-C connection, which means you'll be able to find accessories for that device a little easier. For us, the iPad Air hits the sweet spot. It'll do the usual things like Netflix and online shopping well, uh, take the occasional photo, but the moment you wanna do more with it, you can with the Magic Keyboard and the Pencil. At $600, it's not exactly wallet crushing and the extra $250 over the basic iPad is justified. When it comes to the pros, I honestly see no reason to spend the extra $200 to get the iPad Pro 11 inch over the iPad Air, except for someone who needs to have a decent camera on their iPad. I know the pros have a better hardware with the M1 chip, but unless you're doing an intensive task and comparing the speeds between the devices, you won't notice a difference in performance. Now the last thing we'll note is that the iPad Air uses Touch ID while the pros use Face ID. Now the Face ID versus Touch ID on the iPhones made a world of difference, but on the iPads, the Air's Touch ID sensor is close to that of the MacBook Pros, which is rock solid. Just thought we'd point that out. Now between the 12.9 inch and the 11 inch, <laughs> did, you, did I make you spill? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of a good reason to get this smaller iPad Pro. For this video, I've been typing on the brand new like white magic keyboard and it's mildly annoying because it's so small when compared to the full keyboard of the 12.9 inch version. Now the new 12.9 iPad Pros have a fancy new screen which kind of looks great on paper but from our perspective it's kind of hard to get excited. Why? Because when I'm doing a lot of Apple penciling on my iPad Pro that's brand new with the fancy screen it means I need to use a matte screen protector and we haven't come across one that keeps the clarity of the new fancy screen. Now out of all the screen protectors that we've used over the last year there's only one that would allow us to take it off easily when we want to, which has the matte finish, which makes it feel like paper and still be able to enjoy the mini LED screen when we don't want the matte finish. We can just take it off and we can wash it. Ultimately, there's a reason why pro in quotation marks is in the name. The average user isn't going to do a lot of pro things. Even gaming on the big iPad pro is tough because it's a very large device. Now, if you want to know what we think are the best accessories for the iPads, like those are all iPad accessories in that corner. Do check out that video that we've uh, created. What did you just do? I, I just thought of it now, but I've been reading the comments like from our videos and there's so many people that a comment on how you say accessories <laughs> and they like write it out how you say it. And I just realized that they're right. You say accessories, not accessories. Accessories. <laughs> Oh my God, you were all right. If you want to know what we think are the best accessories, I mean, <laughs> accessories for the iPads, do check out that roundup video. All these accessories in this background we've used, which is crazy because we're reviewers, not grammar scientists. 
<laughs> now, if you're new to our videos, every single week we do a video where we have a drink while doing these tech reviews. For this week, we are trying to sit as slowly Beggar's Banquet um, because there's, it doesn't look like, like, but there's two ounces of bourbon in this thing and it's a great summer drink, but it will knock you on your butt if you drink it too quickly. Now check out that video if you're thirsty and well, want something for summer patio day drinking. From our perspective, the 12.9 iPad Pro is the ultimate touch productivity device. Why? Because it's the size of a piece of paper. It's big enough so that you can easily read what you're writing without having to do a lot of scrolling. It's big enough that you can do a full day's worth of computing without having to take breaks because you're staring at a tiny screen. Honestly, if we didn't have to use Final Cut Pro, there's a good chance that we'd be doing everything on a 12.9 iPad Pro. Now, when would we go with the normal iPad, which is this iPad, which, you know, six years ago looked futuristic because it replaced the really, really fat, thick ones. Not that I have anything that's fat iPads. Honestly, after using all these devices, the only time we'd go with the iPad would be if you're replacing a really old one. And if you're really old, because I say that because my parents have an iPad Air that's about older, that's definitely older than my son. Um, and they hate new technology, so replacing anything sneakily is perfect for them, right? So being able to just like swap out the cover and just put this iPad in front of them, they wouldn't know this difference between the old iPad and this new one. Now, the only other reason why I would, you would actually get this one is if you were like on strict, strict budget reasons. Um, but if you can honestly afford the iPad Air, go with that because it's just got so much more going for it over the normal iPad. Now for the iPad mini, I don't even actually have my iPad mini here. I don't actually know where it is because I haven't used it in a couple years because it hasn't been updated in a couple years, which is a big red flag for us. So don't buy the iPad tiny. <laughs> don't touch it with a stick. I'm assuming it's either gonna be discontinued or updated very soon. So again, from our perspective, the iPad Air is a solid choice to default to. It sits perfectly between the iPad and the Pros with the best potential. Go with the Pros if you specifically know that you need the power of the M1 chip, as well as the best screen, because your job might demand the best color. That's all we got. We're trying to keep it as simple as possible and we didn't regurgitate anything that's found on Apple website because we're assuming that you can read. So if you can just go over there, these are just our top level thoughts about the differences between all these different iPads. First time watching one of our videos, I encourage you to click subscribe because we are reviewers, not influencers. If you want to know what we've been crushing for this video, check that video out, linked either in the card or the description section below. What else can they do to support this unsponsored channel, Val. Um, did you already say hit subscribe? You I can know. say it again. You, <laughs> you can subscribe, hit the notification bell, you can support us through Patreon, and subscribe to all our other channels. Thanks for watching. Monty definitely thanks you. He is bored out of his skull and he's glad that this video is done. It also has a USB-C connection, which means... I gave him my hand by accident. He's a thirsty gangster. I'm not complaining, <laughs> but I am done talking. <laughs> Whatever, fine. What are you? A Libra. <laughs> what are you? You're getting in your feels? Cancer? Now he's in his feels. <laughs> Quick, hit subscribe.